When a child loves, a thousand angels are born. When a child dares to dream to reach the stars and traverse the galaxies, a Kalpana is born. a small town in India. A little girl roamed the woods and roads on her bicycle to the flying club out there. She dreamt of the skies, of the stars, of the vast silence beyond. She had a passion to explore new worlds. Her parents called her Kalpana, not knowing that she would image their cherished dreams and become a citizen of the galaxies. <laughs> Imagination. Kalpana dreamt of breaking barriers to prove that there were worlds beyond worlds for human beings to endeavor in their quest. This slender, petite girl set herself goals and achieved them with single-minded determination. A diamond core sparkled from her eyes and her beaming smile. I was not born for one corner. The whole universe is my native land. कि हम पापा को कहा करते थे कि हमें ये जो जहाज हैं ये उड़ते हैं तो बड़े अच्छे लगते हैं तो मैं उस वक्त ये छोटे-छोटे बच्चे थे उसके भाई को और उसको दोनों को करनाल फ्लाइंग क्लब में वहाँ ले गया एक दिन और वहाँ जाके उनको वो जहाज तो दिखाए दिखाए और उस वक्त मुझे एक फिसिलिटी मिल गई उनके जो वो ग्लाइडर है उस पर उनको मैंने सैर भी करवाई थी उसमें आई थिंक इट्स फॉर मी इट वॉज वेरी फार फेच टू थिंक आई गेट टू फ्लाई ऑन द स्पेस शर्व बिकॉज आई लिव इन इंडिया इन अ वेरी स्मॉल टाउन एंड सो गेट अबाउट स्पेस आई डेंट यू नो इफ माई फोक्स आर गोन लेट मी गो टू द इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज Her first step in education thus began. She's mentioning in 97 about my, uh, mentioning me, paying her regards and sending all or whatever. I mean, she she could talk about the institution. That my I owe my all gratitude and all my uh, this thing, uh, the what I am today to the institution. The next step was pre-engineering at Karnal. Today she is second to none in the global space research. Ironically, her role number in the pre-engineering class in this college was one. These labs became the initial launching pad to propel her on her dreams of conquering space. Kalpana Chawla was slightly different from other girls. She was bold enough to face anything as far as her subject mastery was concerned she was very curious to ask more about mechanism in chemistry and then to know the geometrical aspect of the various molecules and how geometry is decided she was the first woman to graduate from here with a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering in 1982 Kalpana Chawla has been an alumni of this college. She passed out in 1982. She has done PEC proud by becoming a citizen, a global citizen. Not only that, in the words of President of India, she has become a citizen of the Milky Way. These aeronautical labs have a tradition of determination inscribed there by the perseverance of students. I was 4 years senior to Dr. Kalpana Chawla. About her, I remember one interesting incident. it is that uh, there used to be ragging at that time also when she was caught by her seniors for being ragged so instead of being ragged she ragged her seniors she began a college society that had brainstorming sessions to explore new avenues of science but punjab engineering college in chandigarh was not to be the end of the road for kalpan to us waqt mere friend ne mujhe kaha कि भैया ये आपकी बेटी जो ये हमारी बेटी है इतना पढ़ चुकी है और बाकी पढ़ाई उसकी यहाँ नहीं है बाकी पढ़ने के लिए इसको अमेरिका भेज दो तो तैयार थी जाने के लिए चूंकि इसको एडमिशन मिल चुकी थी दो यूनिवर्सिटी से मिली हुई थी एडमिशन क्योंकि मैं दो महीने के बाद आया था 
तो ये बड़ी थकी गई थी मेरी इंतजार कर करके लेकिन मुंह से नहीं बोल दी बोली थी तो कल्पना जब मुझे मिली तो बड़ा रो के मिले तो कहती पापा आपने मेरा कैरियर खराब कर दिया तो मैंने उसको कहा नहीं बेटे तू बिल्कुल जा सकती है तुझे कोई नहीं रोक सकता आर्म विद डिग्री इन एरोनोटिकल इंजीनियरिंग अड फुल ऑफ ड्रीम्स एंड द डिटर्मिनेशन नॉट टू लेट एनी और एनी वन कम इन दे ऑफ रियलाइजिंग she started her journey to texas in 1982 copla moved to the us in september 1982 and uh, she moved to a door uh, to an apartment three doors down from where i was living she was coming by her brother at the time and i actually met them within the first hour of her arrival and um we discovered we had many common interests uh flying and diving and that kind of thing and uh in that result we spent a lot lot of time together and that resulted us in become in marrying uh, getting married in December of 83 actually it wasn't a surprise because i didn't know what the context was i just received a message saying i'm in then when we reported to Johnson Space Center in February 95 it wasn't as national as an astronaut candidate in December 1994 jp received a message from kalpana i'm in she had been selected to be an astronaut and thus began her special training on the 6th of march at the johnson space center in houston it exposed her to a whole new world my well, passion was really for discovery for finding out new things and having a good time doing it and doing something that was slightly out of the out of the ordinary she was motivated and inspired a lot by explorers from surviving in choppy waters to learning to identify edible and poisonous plants from lighting a campfire to making fishing nets from parachute cords she was trained in the mockups and had to tackle glitches deliberately created by mission controllers the special 2 year training at the johnson space center houston prepared her for space land and sea survival as well as for the intricate operations of the space shuttle during my life i would say i've been inspired by explorers when i read about these people i think the one thing that just stands out is their perseverance kalpana a nasa amis research student was first chosen by nasa she was among the six civilian finalists who were selected from a pool of 3000 aspiring applicants She wrote a PhD in aerospace engineering, and her thesis sub- subject was computational fluid dynamics, which is the mathematical representation and calculation of airflow around various objects. Kalpana Chawla, with her carefree attire and attitude, received her PhD in aerospace engineering at the University of Colorado, Boulder, in 1988. Kalpana loved the adrenaline rush while learning to maneuver in a zero gravity environment in simulator. She had earned her silver pin at NASA. She was selected for the Space Shuttle Columbia STS-87 mission in 1997. She was part of a 16-day mission with six crew members doing various scientific experiments and studies. The space shuttle was the oldest of NASA's fleet of spacecraft. Its construction began in 1975 and so the fairy tale turned into a reality. Kalpana soared beyond her dreams. Columbia was to go on its 27th mission at 1:46 p.m. CST 19 1997 STS 87 Columbia 19th November to 5th December 1997 was the fourth US microgravity payload flight and focused on experiments designed to study how the weightless environment of space affects various physical processes and on observations of the sun's outer atmospheric layers two members of the crew performed an eva space 
The 16-day flight was a dedicated science and research mission, working 24 hours a day in two alternating shifts. The crew successfully conducted approximately 80 experiments. The homecoming of the shuttle was safe and sound. It was a mission well accomplished, but for Kalpana, it was not the end of the mission, but the beginning. When STS-87 landed safely, she exclaimed, I'm ready to go again. But she added with characteristic humility, it was a lot of fun for me achieving those things, but it's really no big deal because anyone can do it. There were smiles all over and a collective sigh of relief from those who sat in the control room when the shuttle got back safe. India proudly joined the rest of the world in celebrating the feats of her first space woman. She was an achiever, but she wanted to share her experiences with others. A girl who has gone so far, she gave as a Guru Dakshina after her first odyssey uh, that uh, two students of my school should come and see NASA's institute how we people are working and what for this institute is. To Kalpana, NASA was the most vibrating nerve center for space research in the whole world. The research and development are at their best. She was an achiever, but she wanted to share her experiences with others. Every year, two girls from her school at Karnal are invitees to NASA, courtesy Kalpana. And I went to NASA in uh, 2002. First of all, when I met Kalpana Didi, she came there and I was just uh, searching for her and uh, she came out of her car and she said, I'm Kalpana Chawla. So I was very impressed by her because I was just uh, her kind of girl. So I, I had a dream that I, I will also go like her, so it was a really amazing experience to meet her. Uska match hi nahi tha. Jahan usni main baatein sunta hoon, jahan main dekhta hoon, to uska koi match nahi hai. Puri dunia ke aap puri globe mein nahi hai. Mujhe ab pata chala hai ki uske school se har saal do bache jaate rahe hain uske paas, aur wo magwati thi. Space is the future, but she had made a place for a whole generation to see it in the present. Kalpana Dili, she called me at dinner. I was very amazed and very surprised over there. I got a shock over there that she has called me. And she told to me, Sanpi, whatever dream you have, you must have to follow that. Look straight toward your dream. The 16th of January, 2003, the D-Day. Her second mission was STS-107. It would again be a 16-day mission. It is here that she secured a place in history as the first woman of Indian descent to slip the bounds of gravity and reach the final frontier. Our mission is very exciting. We are basically doing everything that everybody wants to do on a mission. We have a deploy and a retrieve of a Spartan satellite, which is a solar observatory. We have a spacewalk and we have lots of science experiments. The seven crew members were Rick D. Husband, Commander, William C. McCool, Pilot, Michael P. Anderson, Payload Commander, David M. Brown, Mission Specialist, Laurel B. Clark, Mission Specialist, Ilan Raymond, Payload Specialist, and of course, Kalpana Chowla, 
mission solution. The team believed and lived up to the concept. Together, each aim is met. I will be doing the deploy and retrieve of the Spartan satellite, basically taking it out of the payload bay, putting it into space. We'll let it be there for about two days, and then we'll rendezvous back with Spartan, and then pick it back and put it back in the bay. She sent messages to all her teachers, friends, and loved ones before her sojourn into space. When she was to go for the second time on mission SPS-107, she sent an email that she will like to carry an item for the students and the college in space with her, which will become a message to the students. The second letter which we received recently for her second audition, uh, she especially said it, I would like to have a some sort of an insignia to carry into the space if it is sent by Ms. Nirmala Nagudripad. Kalpana was the mission specialist. The mission was to carry out tests for the release of the free-flying satellite to study the outer layers of the sun and the effect of microgravity on a variety of materials. The science experiments, I'm sort of in charge of them uh, we have a lot of experiments which are sitting in the payload bay. Uh, some of them are autonomous. They are controlled by ground. And some of them are inside the mid-deck. And I will be doing hands-on interactive experiments there. The 28th mission of the Space Shuttle Columbia was about to begin. Thursday, the 16th of January, 2003. The launch countdown proceeded as scheduled. 9.18 a.m. EST, a go was given to close the hatch. Ten ten a.m. EST, the countdown clock exited the planned hold at the T minus 20 minute mark. 10.31 a.m. EST, the countdown clock came out to the planned hold at T minus nine minute mark. The final adieu was deeply felt. What I remember is we were at the Beach House at Kennedy Space Center. The Beach House is basically a, a house right on the beach that's been converted for parties and for conferences and that kind of thing. It's a place for the crews to get away and relax prior to launch. And we had the crew toast then with some regular Israeli wine provided by Ilan uh, Ramon. And uh, Rick made a, a long, a, a quite a very, very good speech uh, uh, regarding the flight and the crew. And then um, I can't remember exactly what Culp and I said, but I remember after we left the building, it was dark, and then she was walking to the car to be taken to the crew quarters, and then I w went behind her and hugged her and kissed her and told her I loved her, and then that was it. It was now time to leave the planet Earth from Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The final command was given by the mission director from the launch window. Ten thirty-five a.m. EST, a go was given for the APU start.
SDS-107 was a multidisciplinary microgravity and earth science research mission with a multitude of scientific investigations conducted continuously during the planned 16 days in orbit. The Space Shuttle Columbia had payload base filled with a special pressurized laboratory. It was not just a flight out into space, it was designed for scientific studies. The 16-day mission was to focus primarily on scientific experiments in microgravity. The crew of seven worked for 24 hours to complete an extensive program of tests. Kalpana was the mission specialist. The mission was to carry out tests on a new technology which could enable the permanent recycling of water there. It uh, is very gratifying and humbling and it really is uh, incredible to see that uh, there are all these countries that are participating in this research and basically they have one goal which is to better understand these processes and then be able to use the benefits that come out of them. These processes may be in different areas, be it earth sciences, physical sciences or life sciences. All of the experiments on this flight help us understand these processes better. And any time we understand the processes better, we are better off uh, as a species and as a result as a planet. The Freestar payload, a hitchhiker payload, was used through the 870 Shuttle Small Payloads project. The Freestar consists of separate experiments. It was done on a cross-bay multi-purpose equipment support structure. The carrier avionics provides the interface to the electrical system, the payload power control, and command and telemetry capability. The experience of the unexplored was something that the whole crew treasured. Uh, one day I was in the flight deck uh, looking from the overhead windows outside and uh, it was starting to get dim outside so you start to see your own reflection and there is the earth limb outside. You can still see the earth surface and the dark sky overhead and I could then see my reflection in the window and in the retina of my eye, the whole earth and the sky could be seen reflected. So I called all the crew members one by one and they saw it and everybody said, oh wow. The anticipated moment had arrived. Mission accomplished. Homecoming was now on the agenda. They were now ready for friends and family. After 15 days of round-the-clock experiments in complete isolation from the Earth, they would hear again the sounds of the world and its people. Good morning, Ken. Uh, good morning, uh, to all, and uh, special good morning to uh, my wife, Rona, the love of my life. רונה, אהבת חיי והילדים, אני אוהב אתכם את כולכם ומתגעגע. This was a small and a short sentence in Hebrew saying that I love them, I love Rona and I love the kids and I miss them. Enjoy the journey because whether or not you get there, you really must have fun the whole way. And so Kalpana with her crew lived, laughed and learned. 
the shuttle 16 day mission was over and it was ready to end <laughs> Nine sixteen EST, the first of February two thousand and three. The touchdown was set. Eight fifteen, Columbia begins its deorbit burn. Eight fifty two, first indications of problems begin. Unusual temperature rise. Eight fifty seven, skin temperature sensors fail. Mission control contact shuttle, Columbia, Houston. We see your tire pressure messages. We did not copy your last. There is a very short delay before the shuttle gets there. Roger, the line is lost. 16 minutes before the landing. Excellence knows no boundaries. In my beginning is my end, and in my end is my beginning. Kalpana lived her life to inspire future generations to join her as a citizen of the galaxies.